Hi there and welcome to this video and today we're going to be looking at the new Nikon webcam utility um, plugin and it's in its beta form at the moment. One thing we've seen during lockdown is the rise of people doing video conferencing and therefore needing webcams and actually supply of webcams is struggling to keep up with demand. Um, and therefore there are some alternatives that are worth looking into, not just to replace webcams but give a, a better quality to video streaming and video conferences. Um, and what we're seeing is this rise of alternative software for both mirrorless and DSLR cameras. I think Fuji and Panasonic have released apps or utilities and Canon released one um, fairly recently, their webcam utility. Again, that's in a beta um, state at the moment and works with many of their DSLRs and their mirrorless R and RP cameras. But um, as of yesterday when I had a look, not the R5 and R6, but I'm sure that will follow. I've been using um, one of these quite recently um, and it's an Elgato Camlink 4K. It's a little device that has a USB 3 um, connector on one end. You have to plug it into a USB 3 outlet on your computer or your Mac. Um, and at the other end it has an HDMI cable input. Um, and you run an HDMI cable from here to whichever camera you're using. It works quite well with a, a wide range of different manufacturers' cameras. I've been using it with my Z6, but also with my Sony RX100 Mark V, which I find really useful. It will work at 4K, as the name would suggest, up to 30 frames per second, and at 1080p up to 60 frames per second. And I've been finding it pretty reliable to use for both streaming and video conferences where I perhaps want a higher quality image. I've been using it up to 4K, and you get the benefits of um, your, the lenses on your camera. So if you've got a fast lens, you'll get a really shallow depth of field. So you get that quality 4K image with a blurred out background, which can be quite useful. And the Camlink 4K works with both Windows 10 machines and also Macs, which is quite handy. So if I'm using my MacBook Pro, I can plug it into the side and stream using my Sony RX100 Mark V, which gives a much better quality than the um, webcam built into the MacBook Pro, but in a very small um, camera package. So the Nikon webcam utility beta, um, which is at version 0.9.0 that I'm using, has been rumored for a while. And it works with the Z series cameras, including the um, Z5 that's um, upcoming. It also works with the D6, the D850, the D500, and then the D7500 and D5600. But it doesn't work with the D3000 series of cameras. And one thing to note, I think with the um, DSLRs, you have to have them in live view mode for them to um, work. So let's start by um, looking at how you download the software. So it can be found quite easily in the Nikon Download Center. I've gone to the um, Z6 um, uh, area. And if you look under, there's manuals, firmware. If you look under software, you should find the Webcam Utility Beta. Um, as I say, I'm using the version, the beta version 0.9.0, which was released on the 6th of August. You go to the download page and here you can get an overview, you can get see what the system's requirements are. And what you do is you click on accept, choose your region, hit download, and it will download a file uh, with rather unintelligible file name, .exe. Um, if you run that file by double clicking on it, make sure you do it in administrator mode in Windows 10. It will create a um, folder. For me, it created a folder in my C drive, um, in program files, open brackets, x86, close brackets, Nikon as a subdirectory, and then webcam utility. And what you'll find in here is it opens a series of files. Now, one thing to remember is there's no application or shortcut for this. This is a utility, a plugin that is um, a plugin for other programs. Um, so it runs through other video software such as Skype or Teams or Zoom or I use OBS for a lot of my streaming. 
um, and once installed it's really important when you're going to use it to remember to exit Nikon Transfer 2 or Nikon Camera Control Pro 2 if you're using those and what you have to do is um, go into your, um, your software and add the Nikon um, webcam utility as an input to it. Okay, so let's start by looking at how we um, set up the Nikon webcam utilities and I'm going to do it in OBS. For those of you who haven't come across OBS before, it's quite a powerful um, freeware piece of software that is um, great for recording desktops for tutorials and things like that or perhaps streaming to YouTube, Facebook Live etc. It's very powerful. I've only um, got to scratch the surface of it but um, it works quite well with the Nikon webcam utility. Um, apologies for the slightly psychedelic um, screen, I'll try and sort that out in post-processing but obviously if you're recording OBS, recording OBS, you end up with these sort of ever-decreasing uh, mirrors down to infinity um, look. So what we have to do first is we have to, or the best way to do it is to look at the scenes area down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen and we have to set up what is called a screen a scene um, and when I click plus it will create a new scene and because there's no input the screen will go black for you um, and I'll talk you through what we have to do so if I click plus it gives me um, the option to create a scene I'll call it Nikon web cam when I click OK it will go black now what we have to do is go across to the right of that there is a um, area called sources and we click on the plus icon there to add a source and we select video capture device and add a new video capture device and when that comes up you will see a series of select options and you select device Nikon webcam utility click OK and up pops myself um, what you'll see is that it's put it up in the corner. I'm recording in 4K. Um, it's also got letterboxing because it's um, cropped slightly at 4K. I don't think it's cropped at um, 1080p. But what we have to do is, if we want it to be full screen, we drag it across to full screen, up a bit to position it in the center. And there we have it. Now what you will see is that there is probably a lag between my mouth moving and the sound. That's because I'm recording video with my Z6 which comes in through the USB cable and I'm recording the sound through my boom mic here which goes straight into my PC. And there is a lag between them. Now you do see this if you're recording using a Ninja 5 and um, a Z-series camera and you're recording the sound, the audio directly into the Ninja and you have to adjust the lag between them to get that right. Now using OBS you can do that, you right click on the audio mixer, go to advanced audio properties and we have to create a difference, an offset between the mic here which is mic aux and the input from the camera. Now I've found by trial and error that it's a 500 millisecond delay. So when I click on this, hopefully, as if by magic, the audio and the video are now back in sync. So that's just a small thing that if you're using OBS or another device you, and you're using an external mic, you need to think about. Now, if you're using Zoom or Teams or something like that that doesn't have that ability to put in a um, a lag or a synchronization between all external audio and video what you have to do is really think about your setup and have a mic that connects in through your camera through the 3.5 mil jack on the um, side of the camera because then the audio and the video is synced in camera before being passed down to the PC Another thing to be thinking about is that because a lot of the processing for something like OBS is being done in a computer, you will find the computer on a day like today where it's about 35 degrees will really the fans will start to um, run and that may affect your audio as well. So you've got to think a little bit around how you're going to set this up um, for recording in an optimum way. So let's just 
Um, that's really you know setting it up in OBS. Let's now take a look at um, setting it up in something like Zoom. So if I come into the Zoom app um, and put it down here, so we see the Zoom um, desktop control panel. You go into settings and video and what you'll see is I've selected already I've got the options of my various webcams here I've got the Nikon webcam utility selected it's mirrored because I've got the mirror my video set up um, you can choose to have it in HD or, or not um, or the original ratio but then you get um, a slight cropping so we'll have it in 16 by 9 um, and what you'll see here is this is one of the notes that Nikon gives is that you can only run one instance of the video feed at any one time. So you can only feed the input from the um, your Nikon camera into one application at any one time. So I'm obviously feeding it into OBS and therefore when you go into Zoom you get just the um, placeholder screen. If I shut down OBS you would see the feed into Zoom. So you can only run it into one application at any one time. Now this isn't a limitation with the Nikon software, I don't believe, because it's the same with my other webcams. And it's a Windows 10 limitation that you can only run feed into one application at any one time. Um, obviously, if you're using Teams or something like that, it's a very similar approach. You go into wherever you select your video input device and select Nikon Webcam Utility. So this is the Camlink 4K um, footage, obviously recorded from the HDMI um, output on the Z6 to the HDMI input on the Camlink 4K. And this is the output from the Nikon Webcam Utility Beta, obviously going from the USB-C um, output on the Z6 to the um, USB-A 3.0 on my um, PC. So from this comparison, you can see that the Camlink 4K is possibly slightly more saturated than the Nikon Webcam Utility Beta, but the quality between them is pretty good. Um, so either really works for me. So when might you find the Nikon webcam utility useful? Well, actually, there are a number of different cases. Firstly, if you're live streaming to something like YouTube, Facebook, um, I know it works with some of the, the systems. I know it works with YouTube, I've tried that. Facebook, it works, I think, with um, live, Facebook Live, but I'm not sure it's working with Messenger yet. Um, I need to try that again. Um, this is a beta, of course, so there will be upcoming releases which further enhance the performance. Um, it works well with video conferencing. I've been using it with both Zoom and with Microsoft Teams, so the equivalent of Skype. Equally, I'm finding it quite useful. If I want to do a picture-in-picture -picture, um, approach where I'm filming my desktop, but also with me as a small thumbnail in the corner. Traditionally, I've videoed that and then I've done it in post-production in Adobe Premiere Pro. Well, actually, if you get quite proficient with tools like OBS, then you can do the picture-in-picture -picture straight away and therefore the post-processing is a lot quicker, the rendering is a lot quicker um, when you come to render out your videos as well. So it can speed up your workflow. So I hope you found this video useful. How many of you are trialling um, the Nikon webcam utility? What are your thoughts on it? How have you found it? What, are you, what um, applications are you using it for? What have you found it works with and doesn't work with? It'd be great to know. Add your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I look forward to seeing you on a future video.